Hey, welcome to the Madness Collective. I'm sorry if I sound crazy and I probably look crazy because my hardware just will not work with the system. I don't know why. Anyway, my name is Crescent and this is the Madness Collective and my co-host is Antoine. There he is. Hey. Hi, Antoine. Our guest co-host is Sarah's back. Hey, Sarah. Hey, everybody. What up? What up? About to be Liddy in this bitch. I mean, I just don't want to hear about it in the chat, okay? I, I'm aware that I'm having tech issues. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you look fine. You 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 sound like maybe six percent not as good as you <laughs> usually do, but you good enough. Uh, new banner alert. Uh, it was necessary. It was just necessary, okay. especially because Sarah on here. Um, and also y'all be getting ratchet in the comments. So, um, <laughs> um, this is just from for me. This is just for me. Hilarious. I don't want y'all coming for me. So uh, allegedly, as, yeah, as you do, as you do. Yeah, uh, usually I have an intro. I'm sorry, I do not. Okay, <laughs> we're here. We're here. We made it. We here. We gonna cover some headlines mm -hmm. and just you know rock with it. All right, just you yeah. know check the. Uh, so Tony, I'm not on my phone. If I were on my phone, this would actually be working a lot better. Like, what if, okay. <laughs> No, I'm and, back home. I'm with like the fiber optics, best Wi-Fi on the fucking planet. Because trust me, I pay for that. I don't know what's happening. At, hey, when she man, means at home, hearing, she means you know? at her mama house. I just want everybody okay. to be clear on that. That's why somebody might be trying to stalk me. I don't <laughs> <laughs> also, but you uh, know what? No, go ahead. I was going to say, roll up on here if you want to. Gladys carries. Okay. So what are you about to say, Antoine? Um... I did not have a long night of drinking. I just woke up. That's why my eyes are red. <laughs> I'm uh, really lucky. Um, like my Wi-Fi, considering I live in a large building, I won't say exactly where, um, <laughs> is pretty, it's pretty good. And um, that's because when I first moved in, there were a lot of problems like back to back. And after an event uh, one night with drinking, I called the cable company and... Um, you know, As you I, do. I made I made clear we weren't going to keep doing this, and they sent in the A team. And um, <laughs> and if, if anybody if anybody's stalking me now, it's the guy at uh, Spectrum because he tracks my stuff to make sure it doesn't go off track, and if it does, he fixes it right away. So, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Alrighty then. Sounds like um, sounds like uh. Well, sounds sound, there we go. Put, put in there. <laughs> Sounded like somebody look. I'm choosing silence right now. Sound like somebody Why else. Why do you get to choose might have been silence? Choosing violence because you be saying <laughs> you be saying some off color shit sometimes too. It's for all you niggas. Antoine, you're the most off color one. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Oh my you, god. You introduce after after dark every single time. <laughs> I, have to, I have to protect myself. I'm sorry. Right. We need the protection. Mm, yeah. Uh, Another production note, since my audio is not what it usually is, if y'all hear background noise, please tell me because G is doing things in the kitchen. <laughs> so a actually, the noise canceling on your laptop is probably really good. So we probably, it won't pick up anything on the background, in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We shall see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we will pick right, up on your so, anxiety, yeah. though. <laughs> right. I mean, actually, that part, fuck it. I, whatever, we hear it. I mean, like, it is what it is. <laughs> Just saying. Um, right. So, like I said, no intro, but there are headlines. So, we're going to jump in. Uh, Portia versus Simon, round four. Um, did either one of y'all get a chance to read that article? Because I did not. And it's the only reason it's on here is because I was talking to Danielle last night and she mentioned it. I was like, Simon did what now? Simon said who? <laughs> Simon's asking for what information? It's you a, go, it's Sarah. Oh, gosh. I mean, Crescent, you never do this. Um, well, it's a lot of drama. <laughs> um, he's, he, he wants, like, he's demanding texts from, like, years, like, two, two years ago and stuff from, like, 2022 and on. He wants texts with her and producers. I'm thinking maybe he's trying to, maybe he's trying to make an argument that, like, she's just doing <laughs> stuff for the show and it'll be shown in the text. I don't know. Like, he's yeah. definitely... Yeah. yeah, he's trying to prove that he's... all of the he was he's a pawn in something that was premeditated <laughs> by yeah. Portia and the network. That is exactly what he's implying. Yes. He wants so all. He's like, I want yes. all the proof. And he said, he said, and that nigga that, that showed up uh, with the guns at the house that you claim with your motherfucking bodyguard. I need to see a W two bitch. Where is it? 
I know that's your, he was like, I know that's your cousin, uh, Juju. Yeah. I know it's your cousin, Juju. It ain't no damn security. That's basically and what he's he, implying. And then oh, he's in Dubai really posting all these videos and stuff, um, you know, with like some other woman's voice in the background, or, you know, and he's, I don't know, a lot of the posts he was putting up were just really, um, I was like, what are you, the Riddler? You know what I mean? He was posting yeah. up a lot of, a lot of really vague, you know, so I am reading, yeah, I'm reading, he posted, um, <laughs> looking for a new country to flee to or fleeing to a country near you. What, because, what's happening? because <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I didn't know this part. Portia has spoken about the divorce. She said, I had to get out of there because his legal status is questionable. Uh, criminal activity is being alleged. I don't know this man no more, so yeah. I can't sleep in the same house. <laughs> that's basically what she she was implying. So that's what he was trying to make a joke it. about it, yeah. uh, which he shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I'm sorry. For those who might not be aware, this is Real Housewives of Atlanta drama. Sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. No, and then just some of his other posts, though, were so weird. It was like... I don't know. It's like an inside joke. Nobody knows what you're talking about, Simon. You know, we can keep pushing. It's weird. We can keep pushing. Yeah. I just wanted something kind of stupid to kick us off. So, but uh, but speaking of housewives, um, the first part of the Potomac reunion aired uh, last Sunday, and I watched, and the the shit between Giselle and Candace is so fucking nasty now. It, so, there's no chance of recollection there. I, I'm sorry, re reconciliation. <laughs> yeah, no chance recollection works too. No like chance of me recalling the word reconciliation. That's what the fuck I meant to say. So I'm trying to catch up so that I can watch this first uh, reunion, and I'm hoping that there's only two. I don't want to go through three rounds of this. I don't want that. Um, I, you know what? I'm only doing two. I think they're going to have three. I think they're going to have three. Um, um, because only the other rich the other thing that happened was uh oh this if now you ain't even gotta watch it to get this. So one of the newer cast members, this is Mia's third season, I think. She yeah. and her husband are having issues, and her husband is older. G. Yeah. Gordon. Mia, Gordon. 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 Well, they call him G. Um, uh, so sorry, I thought I missed that one. Uh <laughs> hey, Rich. Um, so they it was alluded that she was dating a rapper. I mean, as you do on all these shows, uh, it's either a rapper or African or a Nigerian specifically. Everybody. Well, Karen said. Them. Karen said she was she was hanging out with a rapper, and she right. said that she said I was hanging out with a rapper, but I hadn't slept with him while I was married. Yeah. To G. So he's a radio personality. So I guess he's like a DJ, almost like like Tom Joyner, a big boy from Big Boy's Neighborhood, that type of person. So <laughs> during the reunion. Wendy, because Wendy been messy as fuck. Wendy goes, hey, Mia, I don't want to get in your business, but the streets are saying that the DJ was caught at your house trying to drag your son, Jeremiah, away from the house and yelled at you, you know this child is mine. He was trying to take it. So during the reunion, they had to ask her, like, does the rapper think that your youngest child is his? And she was like, yes. Yeah, and she so sounds nice. like she ain't sure, ain't been no paternity test. And Ooh, her husband is, is allowing her to date the rapper. At one point, y'all know what a cuckold is? Yes. That, oh, I do. You might want to explain, though. Go ahead and elaborate. That's when like, it, a, a man enjoys being emasculated by watching his, his wife, girlfriend, slash significant other fuck or you know, suck on another man. Uh, it has There's to be a man. <laughs> I'm choosing silence. <laughs> yeah, there, there are many definitions. I'm choosing silence as well. There so, are many so, you know, they have breaks during the reunion. So when they went to their lunch break and everybody touches up their makeup, her boyfriend, the rapper, called her and she was like, hey, G's in here. G, say hi. G, G. And for some reason, when G spoke to him, his voice sounded the least masculine I've ever ha heard it sound. He's like, hey, man, what, what's going on? And I'm like, this is this is the most emasculating thing I've ever seen. The dude who she's currently fucking, who has implied that Jeremiah is his, 
is talking to her husband on the phone. It was the weirdest thing. Uh, uh, yeah. So, 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 so I just want to know now, this is some tea. Okay. So like, mm. had we had some of this popping off during the season? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. You should have saw their faces like, at the reunion. Me. Like the camera went there, but like, uh, at Ashley's old messy ass. Ashley was like, <laughs> I mean, it was, <laughs> it was, was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> It seems like it's starting to happen more and more. Like the new trend is that the official season ends and then like two months later, they have to roll the cameras back on because um, somebody had some super scandal happened. <laughs> so they need yeah. to. Well, Sarah, keep and in so mind, is- keep in mind, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like Robin kicked that shit off because she didn't want to come clean about this crazy shit with her and Juan during that yeah. season and so you're right after that season it had to be this whole like you know they had to roll special credits with a whole paragraph with her like it was extra and then she got <laughs> on the live, I don't know. right and it's like okay let's do this because extra because chapter it depends i think on how far wide you're going with bravo because it's like did that I'm, happen before or after the black Vander- people Vanderpump I'm Rules, not, I'm they not, had I'm it. Not, I'm, not, I'm sorry, they, Sarah. I'm Sarah, Sarah I, literally, I'm only checking for the black people. I'm not. I'm not I, gonna make. I'm answering that, your so. question. Though. I don't know that Robin <laughs> was first. Is the point? I don't know that Robin was first. Is the point? But yeah. it is becoming much more of a trend. I feel like, and on the housewives, it seems like it's happening more and more because somebody's either gotten arrested or cheated or you know yeah. well i'm gonna say as far as, as far as real housewives of potomac and real housewives of atlanta like that's and that's all i'm sticking to outside of that i can't speak on it i fuck with my uh, mom had me watching salt lake salt lake was riveting because one of the cast members yeah, got yeah. caught by the feds and actually indicted and yeah. fucking thrown in prison yeah. <laughs> that jen and shot shit she camera? had a black they husband her while they were, <laughs> where they were filming yeah, and her husband yeah. is black. They called him coach. But hey, one last thing in the Mia thing, and then we can move on from Housewives as we weren't prepared to talk about this. Yeah. Turns yeah. out the DJ did not just come out of any, he didn't fall out of thin air. The DJ slash radio personality is her high school slash sweetheart. Slash rapper. Yeah, so, well, he's not a rapper, apparently. That was a mis uh, characterization. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah but he he's actually her high school sweetheart. So she's been in contact with him ever since then, on and off. Interesting. Yeah. And admitted Uh, to having an affair with him briefly during her marriage. (laughs) And maybe that's when (laughs) Jeremiah was conceived. I I just thought it was bad. I thought it was bad (laughs) that this boy's name kept being thrown around in the middle of grown people fuckery. I thought they should have said your son or your child and not named him. Now, I didn't like that part. I didn't like that part. I agree. Uh, I just want to know, uh, Antoine, you wanted, did you highlight Chavez's comment? And if you want to address Yeah, I, I got, they were up there. Um, but yeah, y'all know what I meant. It, you, when you like watching your girl <laughs> fucking suck on no. another man, I mean, that's ba- that's the basics. And as Sarah stated, there are variations. Because uh, sometimes I think Chavez had jokes. <laughs> of course. Because sometimes, sometimes in the pornography, they go, it's really bad where they have, they'll have a scene where like it'll be a man and his wife and they call a plumber and the plumber comes and he starts working and then he'll be like, man, your wife got some big old titties. And then he'll be like, yeah, they're really nice. And then he'll just start grabbing the wife's titties and literally fucking her in front of the husband. And the husband is sitting there watching. And then they'll start demeaning the person. Like, look how little his dick is. I mean, they'll do. It's it's kind of comical sometimes. <laughs> All right, Sarah, well, you look I'll like just, you have a comment. Sarah? Yeah, I'll, I'll just blow your mind a little further, though, because even if you think about a different definition of, of cuckold. So um, I learned about it more also in like the you know, anthropological, um, you know, sociological sense. Um, yeah. And, you know, they would say that um, man's, uh, you know, greatest fear evolutionarily is that, you know, he's raising a, a child that's not his own. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes that sense. That, and that that's cuckoldry. So even yeah. if you look at it that way, it still applies here because, surprise, Gordon, <laughs> is that even your son? Right, so it's right. So actually... Whatever way you want to slice it, I think you I think you can still go ahead and say that's the right Leave way. it to Mia to clarify for using her real life. 
Yeah, you you yes. in our real life. Um, yes. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and push on from that. Okay. Um, but thank Be careful you both. out there, fellas. Get a DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they do and, wa- wa- and watch out for plumbers. You know I'm like, what? shoot, everybody got to test the way they be switching some of these babies. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, which the actress? This is Real Housewives of Potomac, <laughs> part one. <laughs> <laughs> now, with regard to the plumber situation, that I understand was a porno that Antoine was referencing. So I actually made. I, I actually. I, it's not a specific uh, one. I was just oh, painting a scenario because okay, I'm an artist. This is a template. Yeah, you are. You are. Okay, moving on. Something positive. Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. Okay, Beyonce. Uh, headline: Beyonce accepts Innovator Award at 2024 iHeart Radio Music Awards. And so while we, you know, we were on the air Monday night. Well, I was kind of on the air Monday night. I was trying to be on the air Monday night. <laughs> Drama. And I kept seeing this con- her getting an award and her with Stevie Wonder on stage. And I was like, when did this happen? Did this happen Sunday night? How did I miss this? It happened yeah. Monday night while we were on the air. So I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so she, uh, so Stevie Wonder presented it to her. And it's funny because she was like, thank you so much for playing harmonica on, uh, jo- was it Jolene? Which it's one Jolene. Yeah, it's all Jolene. Jolene, right. Yeah. Because I know we mentioned it, but I saw that. I saw that irrespective of the oh, iHeart Awards stuff. So, like, I saw that beforehand because we mentioned that on Monday night. That he yeah, so it was either Caleb or Tony that stated it in the uh, comments. Yeah, but I, I I mentioned it on the show. Well, you know what? Last oh. Monday night was crazy. Yesterday. Oh, but I yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. Ahead of time. You did. And the reason I'm thinking that is because we didn't get to see it. They said it before we... They said it in the comments before we had a chance to mention the fact that it was in the show flow. So that's why, yeah. We, well, it took me a half an hour to get on. So anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Can we just play a quick game? Um, can you put a, a one in the chat for Callum and a two in the chat for Calum <laughs> so we can just figure out oh, how he's supposed hilarious. to be saying his name? He said it. I looked it up. I thought it was the Irish pronunciation, which was, I think, Callum. But sure, I like that. Hey, CJ. A one, for, a one for Callum and a two for Calum so that we can <laughs> make a final agreement on the same. Thank you. <laughs> That's, That's fine. That works. That's okay. We're so not doing Stevie. the last name. Go on. So uh, obviously, um, Beyonce, you know, thanked him. And he said to her very sweetly, he was like, I just want to thank you for motivating the world to becoming a better place. That's so sweet. So her speech, though, she says, innovation starts with a dream. And the road to execute that dream can be very bumpy. Being an innovator is doing what everyone believes is impossible. I know that's right. Being an innovator often means being criticized, which will often, uh, which often will test your mental strength. Girl, speak on it. Being an innovator is le- leaning on faith and trusting that God will catch you and guide you. That's exactly what Antoine and I are doing. Uh, so she also <laughs> continued. She said to all the record labels, every radio station, every award show. My hope is that we are more open to the joy and liberation that comes from enjoying art with no com- no preconceived notions, right? I want to dedicate this award to all the innovators who have dedicated their lives and their art to creating shifts. Thank you for your sacrifice and your pow- powerful forces and your dauntless spirit. It was so the da- it was the da- it was the dauntless for me where I was just like I can't anymore. Beyonce's <laughs> speeches be killing me. <laughs> Beyonce and you know I love her you know I love her when when I saw Dauntless I said okay can we have some semblance of this potentially being a, a, a speech that actually would come out of your mouth no. naturally <laughs> no 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 we cannot no we and you, you know what her. and reasonably yeah. speaking you want to bring excellence when you standing next to Stevie Wonder so you don't want to freestyle it so I am just joking y'all but I, I'm not at the same time it was comical to me when I <laughs> I'm going to let Sarah deal with uh, the comment, <laughs> but before that, so from our friend, Mr. Moscript, <laughs> this is going his last name. Um, so, but here's why, here's the other thing I want to say is oh, perfect. she also thanked, she thanked Sister Rosetta Tharp. Is it Tharp or Thorpe? It's Tharp, right? Sister Rosetta, artist. I'm oh, I'm, 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 I'm not sure. I think it's Tharp, it's Tharp, it's Tharp right? Tracy yeah. Chapman, Linda Martell, Prince, Andre 3000, Tina Turner, Michael Jackson, and Stevie Wonder, applauding them for executing their dreams so that people can follow. So in like one of, I think it was a tweet or something I read, they were like, I'm sure Erica Badu, <laughs> the hair was spinning around <laughs> on her neck because she thanked Andre 3000. <laughs> that part. Oh my God. Callum, isn't that, I feel 
think that's what I was saying. Callum? Callum? Callum. No, it did. We have never pronounced it this way because this this does I sound like it's Iris. Callum. Yeah. Callum. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we. I think I just saved a. I saved a snippet in my finder with the pronunciation. Uh, Crescent is very thorough, so she'll correct me. I'm sure if I ever mispronounce it. In Rhode Island, it's still Callum. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thank you for being a loyal watcher. <laughs> yes. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thank you. You don't know how much show. is appreciated. <laughs> Look, look, you you you, you fit right in. You fit right <laughs> in. Right in. <laughs> yep. Appreciate it. Um, uh, moving on. Uh, Lizzo. Remember we talked about Lizzo on Monday and we mentioned that she said she quits and it's, you know, uh, I hate all this. Y'all trifling. Fuck y'all niggas. Um, and white people. So it's not a real quit. It she never is. <laughs> These entertainers get on my nerves. It's just, it's just the pressure's too much, and I'm just, you know, I know the checks keep clearing, but it's so fucking <laughs> difficult, huh? I'm never gonna be seen again. I'm gonna take my money and I. Right. Once you get to a point where niggas will pay for you to play the flute and twerk on stage, you're not quitting that gig. You are not quitting that gig. So she said, she said food. it wasn't about the music industry, but how about how she wants to stop giving any negative energy attention. Girl, now that is a fight, but yes. I'm going to stay focused right now. So what she said, she continues to say, what I'm not going to do is quit the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting with people, um, because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice, which seems to be louder than the positive. Girl. Sorry, I had a day today, but yeah, mm -hmm. I understand and feel that. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I've I've already <laughs> given my you you got anything you you got anything to say to Lizzo's old line ass, Sarah? Sarah, I just you know it just feels like those clickbait stories that pop up in your feed. You know what I mean? Where yes, like the headline is something like you know crazy, like you know like you'll never believe what she said, and then you. Going, you have to go through like ninety five thousand screens. You have to keep reloading it, um, and then whatever, like you either never get to the main point, or when you do, it's it's not really exciting. It just yeah. feels like that kind of thing. Like, yeah. oh, I, I need so. some, I need some attention. Let me like post this, um, I quit thing, so that people can like <laughs> go crazy and write articles and speculate because like you know Kate Middleton's getting too much attention, and then Yo. um, and then it's like psych. And it's really this. And I even get the message, but I feel like I, I still don't, I still feel like people be doing stuff kind of intentional. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I just, the way she worded it made, gave people concern and maybe she was just in a, in a headspace and to Relinda said, log off. A lot of people said that, like, you know, stay off the internet and get it right in your journal, which, but I get it. This yeah. is again, this is what the kids do. Okay. They wear whatever they want to wear and they like give their feelings online <laughs> and then they're not what I'm I, I don't like it when they do these posts, which because she made it, she alluded. It makes me not want to be here anymore. And that's what I'm like, you doing like too that. much. You had a bad day. We all do. You grown and you have too big of a platform like, to I'm be saying shit hours. like that. She's one of those artists, too. What what really irritates me about this is despite the fact that she says that she's being judged by what she looks like and all these different things. Lizzo in a short, in a relatively short period of time has solidified herself in industry. Lizzo could do a residency in Vegas. It would sell out. People will go watch her on tour. If they say Lizzo is headlining something, we're going to watch it. If Lizzo is on SNL, I'm watching because she dances her ass off. So it's like you, you know, you, you got the goods to go online and listen Fair. to trolls. That is something you should be above. Just do what Beyonce does. You know, just follow when Beyonce don't talk to the press. She just serves excellence. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do moving forward. Yes. You've already proven I mean, yourself. Beyonce, Beyonce had to learn yeah. that. She did her interviews, at, you know, at, earlier on. And then she was like, I'm, I'm done fucking with y'all. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. done with these interviews. But also the other thing is like she, um, not Beyonce, um, Lizzo got, you know, all that like really bad um, press, obviously over the stuff with her employees and everything. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that had kind of died down. That yeah. was dying. That was dying down a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to come back or, you know, et cetera, but it, like it wasn't, 
people weren't necessarily talking about it right now, but then you put up a thing and you, you have it brought up more now, you know? Well, I do think, I do think with her performing at the fundraiser and that circulating, and she had resurfaced on something else than the employees. And I, I know the lawyer for the employee, employees in particular spoke up and was just like, I don't know why she was allowed to come perform at that shit. So I could see her oh, probably I didn't know that. responding to that. Yeah, he no. said some slick shit. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm nobody part cares. Of his that's the thing. To that. I mean, I, it, it's I just the Maybe. thing is, that's what she doesn't realize is that. Because she's so beloved, had it been anybody else, people would have been like, yeah, why is she? But because it's Lizzo and we know how she moves and a lot of us don't necessarily, you know, usually it's like, we got to listen to the victims. In this case, that is not tracking well for these, the people that are accusing her of doing, you know, the sexual harassment and stuff. So, yeah, she's good. She really does need to log off and stop listening to the the yeah, because even with yeah. what you're saying, President, she still made it a bigger story because she has a bigger platform. Yeah. And maybe a lot of us, like me and Anton, hadn't even seen that employee. But she also, you know, like by doing that, she, oh, yeah. she the story became about her and her posts and her responding to it and her bringing it mm -hmm. back up and her putting it back like squarely into the spotlight. Yep. No, not disagreeing with that. I'm Log just, off. You know, again, these kids, <laughs> they journal online and, you know, this, Please yeah. stop doing that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> my, me and my. Yes, um, I know, Kristen. I know. I'm. Yes, I'm calling her a kid because I'm sorry. Younger. The younger and, journal online. Let me. Um, my my uh, my brother is here in Los Angeles now. So me, my mom and my brother live in Los Angeles. Aww. now. Yay. Um, my cousins. We had the first of many late night hotel conversations last night. I'll tell, tell you all about that <laughs> another night. Um, but we we it. had we had a short discussion about how neither one of us when. Twitter became big when I don't know anything that you could think of that involves commenting, probably Instagram as well. I yeah. just never felt, con and maybe it's because I've had this show as an outlet. I've never felt confident putting something permanently on one of these platforms. And cause I'll give you, cause y'all know how I feel about, you know, uh, Israel and, you know, Palestine situation. Right. But I can tell you right now, if I watch a video and somebody's like, yeah, you know, and this is, uh, and I'm in agreement with me, I'm not liking that video. That shit is permanent. Somebody will find out and say, we saw what you liked last week. We know how you feel, nigga. <laughs> mm -hmm. We know everything about you based on the commentary. I just, these people putting racial jokes and all this shit on Twitter, like it comes back to bite you in the ass. It's scary. Antoine, I think that those of us who are firmly Gen X, even if we're like kind of younger Gen X, growing up with the transition to having this huge online presence, I was always leery of yeah. all of that. Extremely from from out from out the gate because we didn't grow up with that. And but yeah. this younger, I'm gonna say younger, not call her a kid, generation, they they literally grew up with it. So they that's their go-to. Yeah. And, and more so like entertainers, oh, right? Like I'm like, girl, you got, as Sarah's like, you got a whole platform, both of you guys, you know, like you are a star. Yeah. So you might want to like make the adjustment and not back throw back. everything online. Like the way Candace did with Real Housewives of Potomac, like was that last season when she got her drunk ass on Instagram live talking shit about everybody else in cast. She Jeez. was like, oh, you know, I was online. It's like, girl, she's don't, no, that, this is not the, the way to move. Well, I see. I thought she said she was quitting, but did they put her she on? She did, and a lot of people don't believe that. But that's wait. What the official that who was is. what? That can't you talking Candace, about? Candace? Candace is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candace, Candace. Now, yeah, based on Candace, she's not coming back next season. It's just funny though. Candace, for probably the fourth time, put herself in a situation where she was running her goddamn mouth and almost got her ass beat with a bottle this time again. Again, it involved. Uh, 750 milliliter bottle of alcohol. And it was the girl who yeah. she called a Sesame Street character. Sesame Street. Yeah, and she um, wasn't and having it. She was like, now that I'm in your face, you yeah. you had, it was like, uh, who was, it, remember Nikki, Nick called out uh, uh, Miley Cyrus when she got that award. She was like, yeah, I got uh, a call out a bitch that had a whole lot to say about me in the papers. Miley was good. That's what the Sesame Street character did yeah. to Candace and Candace kept running her mouth and then was yeah. about to get get the beat down. Oh, she just has never learned. 
Um, is, that, Candace is, like, the, is that the last episode? Sorry, Sarah. Is that the last episode of the season, or did they? Did it happen? It's either the last or the one before. Or second to last. Yeah, it's the one before okay. because they address it. Way up to it. They address yeah, it. It happens, and then the thing happens in the end because they don't have footage of it. They just had an audio, and then the next one, you know, Ashley <laughs> Ashley comments on it. And exactly. Ashley it is ends like, with a to be continued with the audio, and the next episode starts with yeah. the audio, the last one with that. But like. Okay. She's Candace says that um that old saying people um say you probably heard it and like dazed and confused. Um <laughs> let letting your mouth write write you a check that your butt can't cash. That's yes. um that's Candace. Are that's, you mean like the old people used to say? <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> mama used to yeah. say. <laughs> yes, yeah. Dazed and Confused is a pretty old movie, yeah. Um yes. <laughs> That's that's uh, I know my mother has never Canada. watched that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, movie, movie. But, yeah, it is a classic. Canada. It is. It it's is a classic. Well, it is a classic, Thank but you, I'm like, I know that. Look, I'm not even my mother. I know that from my grandparents. Okay, like. That's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the thing. That's why, because it's like an yeah, older movie, also. and they're using, you know, they're using <laughs> stuff that people were using back in the '70s. So that's kind of the whole point. But like, yeah, that's Candace. Like she be. Writing so many damn checks, man. That bitch is in debt on ass beatings. Like really, yeah. like. It, it's not good. I don't support violence. I'm just saying she, there's some people aren't going to just let you run your mouth endlessly and like hit below the belt. And then they're not going to strike back. And some people don't do that. You know? Yeah. She's See, real Sarah vicious with her comebacks. Wanting, Sarah be having me want to go down a whole different path. Cause I'm like, so days and confused came out in 1993, but I know they were talking about the seventies and I'm just like, so these white people was like quoting black folks. Sorry. I'm not going to go there. About Candace, um, <laughs> I said this when all this Sarah. This is your fault. I was like off on a whole they, other tangent. They steal. Um, pe they've been stealing people's phrases for a long time, honey. Even that yes. forever, honey. forever you know? in a day. I know that's what I'm saying. I'm just like, they well, how about by, that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, how about that? So, but that's what I said about Candace when Monique and her got into it, and we have already spent way too much time talking about Real Housewives of Potomac. We have our end. But I said this then, I was like, this is on her. And Monique ended up being the one to leave because Giselle caused all this fucking ruckus about it. But I'm like, and then she had one more season of being super crazy and then she calmed her ass down a little she bit. She really but did. She did, she made the adjustment. Cause I'm like, you you weigh a buck oh five soaking wet yeah. maybe. Yeah. And you still maybe. wanna be the one to talk all the big shit. And then when somebody comes swinging at you, now it's a problem, right? But you the one being like, what's up, what's up, what's up? Girl, bye. Yeah. So here we are. Here we are again. Um, okay. Rich the actress, who is Jamar? <laughs> and we are moving on. Hi, Valero. <laughs> Hi, Fatima. Um, hey, Rolanda. I think I said that already, but we will Jamar I'm, so, okay. I'm assuming that's your significant other. Are we getting you in trouble? <laughs> <clears throat> Back to the bridge. Back to the Baltimore bridge. So, Antoine, this article was for you. Uh, this is the man who was the last one to make it off the Baltimore Bridge before the oh, collapse, or second to yeah. last. This was that was, I found that for you, and okay? I think that was the truck that I saw. He was in a truck, I believe. So I think that might have been what I saw in the footage. They also said in the article they said they said cars ended up in the water. So if someone was in a car and they ended up in the water, were they saved? Because no, so we're, okay. Remember, we talked about this. So there were the the workers were had gotten into their cars for their break. So there was at least two, maybe three, okay. cars that workers were in, right? And so one of the sets of cars they rescued two of them. Okay. The second, at least a second car, they pulled those bodies out. And so I think there's a third car that sounds like it's so missing. So what's what I confused think. me in the article is the good. article is talking about a civilian who just Correct. got off the bridge. Then they t they said, yeah, some other cars, blah, 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 fell in the like water. Six. I feel oh, like right. they should have indicated those cars had workers in them. Because if you don't yeah. say the workers, I'm thinking, I was like, yeah, I thought some other cars had fell in the water. So, okay, thank you for clarifying well, that for me. So what he, when I read the article, he said he was driving slowly across the bridge and driving around these trucks, which I assume were the trucks that the workers were in. Yes. And he said there was another guy who had, it was another vehicle behind me. It was a tractor, but he didn't have a trailer mm -hmm. because he actually said he got in front of him. So him and that other know, yeah, vehicle exactly. got off the bridge. And then within the next like few minutes is when everything went to hell. <laughs> um, so it says only six more cars went through that lane before Woo! the yeah. ship struck the bridge's pillar. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And he said he got to work and people were like, oh my God, we weren't sure. Like, we're so happy to see you because did you hear what happened? And yeah. yeah so 
But yeah, so, I, I, so when I saw the headline, I, I thought about you, Antoine, because I know you were. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, 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 welcome, Jamar. Uh, Rich, the actress's <laughs> husband. Thank you for listening. I hope you know. What's up? What's up? Don't judge us too harshly. Um, <laughs> uh, and thanks again. Um, just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I I can't imagine. He said he said he was like. I felt like he was trying to get 15 minutes because he was like, I was on my way to my 18th job and I've been working so hard. I was so tired even when I drove off the bridge. And uh, they were like, man, I was so happy to see a truck outside because, you know, the bridge collapsed. And he's like, oh, yeah. my God, I was just on the bridge. He reminded me yeah. of the lady. Uh, ain't nobody got time for that. What's her name? It's the white version. <laughs> Sweet felt, something. You, yeah. I felt that a little bit too, because like in the, in that, when they said, we think it was, he was probably this one. I'm like, they haven't even confirmed. He was definitely <laughs> even on the bridge, but he like, so he definitely reached out to them because they're not even totally positive, but they're like, there is a car that resembles his car. That could be him. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, he definitely was calling around. And I think though, you know, even with that said, he probably gonna have some messed up survivor's guilt. So, you know, I wish him well. Yeah. You know? uh, did you see his last name was DeSantis? So he already Oh God. He was yeah. giving me sugar bear That's from uh here comes uh honey boo boo. <laughs> That's what I was getting. He he had a sugar bear vibe. Um oh hey, <laughs> so correction. Other... Correction. Um it was in the I comments, think... and you know, I'm not still adjusting to the new commenting system that Crescent was in charge of initially uh, for the first, you know, uh, all the Never. years oh, that we've been having Never. comments Never. displayed on the screen. Uh, I mentioned David Duke and I associated him with Mississippi and Tony, uh, Tony pointed out it was actually Louisiana. He did it in the comments, but I missed it last week. So shout out to y'all, especially Tony for keeping us honest and uh, factually correct here on the Madness Collective because we don't want to be out in these streets like other niggas just spreading lies and misinformation. So thank you. Um, <laughs> one, well, I was right about the people who went to the water as Tony just validated. So thank you yes, for that. Yes. And then uh, Bilal is, you know, he's checking for you, Sarah. He says, good to see you. <laughs> Chocolate caramel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have to have a brown eye. You know? <laughs> Oh, Wait, who man. is Sweet Brown? Is that who you're talking about? Yeah, the Antoine lady with the gold Jonas? tooth who who went on camera. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Remember, she she milked it. She she was the last one out of that. Nobody had time for it. Cause remember, it was one. It was one guy that it was hide your kids, hide your wife. I feel like he was he was early. Was that the leper? Yeah, he was early. Was? That was Antoine Dotson. That was Antoine yeah. Dotson. But the last one that I saw that just didn't take. It was the guy that had the one eyebrow drawn on, and he was like, "I was, I was, I was eating a piece of fish. I was eating a piece of fish, and I heard the shooting. I heard the shooting, and I'm like, you were ready for this moment. It makes it so inauthentic. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the leprechaun stuff for a minute. Um, when I was they, when they say, thought they did saw you the say lepers. <laughs> no, the leprechaun. I, Don't tell me you I, never saw those. I, with I, the Sarah, I send it out. A friend of mine, my friend that I moved to California <laughs> with. He's obsessed with it, so he sends it out every year, and I resend it. I sent it to y'all, Crescent. Wait, raise your hand if you saw the leprechaun. And then they have a drawing. It is crude and look like a four-year-old drawing. Amateur sketch. Yeah. One at a time. One at a time. Explain, because yes, I am familiar, but I'm sure not everyone is. So they have the amateur the sketch. And then we are it's moving like a, on. Hey, Danielle. I'm gonna find it. Y'all, I'm, I'm gonna find it. Y'all, yeah, I'm gonna find the left shit. If you just put leprechaun, and I'm telling you, it's like it's like one. I mean, maybe the movies messed it up, but it's one of the first things that'll come up. Yeah. Um, if, if, I'm sure if you do leprechaun and crackhead, it'll be like right there. You know. <laughs> Could have been does, a it, <laughs> does it appear during um St. Patrick's Day? Like when does it when does that video when did it first start circulating? It, no, it wasn't Day. even about the it was like there was a leprechaun in the hood and and like people were swearing <laughs> that they thought and had all these people getting interviewed about it. And the interviews <laughs> are just, they're just like precious gold. 
And um, and when they put up, it's just, it's like a real news story. And you're like, how is this real life? Because when they put up the <laughs> amateur cat, and it's like, literally looks like somebody's kid took a pencil and it drew like a little <laughs> leprechaun hat. And like, well, yeah, just in time for that. St. Patrick's Day, crowds oh, are no. coming by the dozens to get an up yeah. yeah. view at what some say is a piece yeah, of can hear it. Folk yeah, folk yeah, Some people in the front of the area of Mobile say. And it's not oh, letting my. me stop. Jesus. Well, just in time for St. Patrick's okay. Day. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up now. Give me a second. Uh, <laughs> All right. It's great. Might as well at this point. I don't know why. I try and keep three, control of the show. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. I, that should be enough for, for us. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Crowds are coming yeah, by yeah. the dozens to get an up close view at what some say <laughs> is a piece of Irish folk folklore. Some people in the Crichton area of Mobile say a leprechaun <laughs> has taken up residence in their neighborhood. It's the way the news reporter leans <laughs> in. A Johnson leprechaun. <laughs> Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do a little bit of tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yay? <laughs> Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This salmon ah! resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow from the other limb. Could be a crackhead who got hold to the wrong stuff. And it told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. Yeah, still on there, guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. This guy helping to direct traffic says he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This is our spells right here. This is a special leprechaun flute, which has been passed down from thousands of years ago from my great-great-grandfather, who's Irish. I just came to help out. Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a backhoe and uproot that tree. I want to know where the gold is. I want the gold. Give me the gold. I want the gold. This is Brian Johnson, NBC 15. Wait, wait. I'm going to show him where the gold at. I'm going to show him. Look. The, the gold is in, the gold in this nigga's mouth. Don't tell. That look like Cameron before the fame, don't it? That look like Cameron before the fame. I, I cannot breathe. I cannot breathe. I see that every single year. I it's it's like my favorite thing. Like I every time. It's, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Wait, just wait. So, You've never seen that. I, no, 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 no. Oh. You do send it. I oh, you okay. send it every year. Okay. I'm familiar with it. I hadn't watched it in a minute. And I definitely don't remember the latter half with the dude with the leprechaun flute that he said got passed on. I don't think I've ever seen the whole extended fucking so version. Who else seen the leprechaun? I just, I, I love us. I, I fucking 100% love oh. us. I'm, really, I'm here to help. Oh my God. I'm here to help. John oh. Carroll is in the chat. What's up, John? Oh my God. That was awesome. So now yeah. I feel bad yeah. about going back to the goddamn bridge <laughs> collapse situation story because you know, it's there's so 22 Indian crew members Remember, still stranded on the um on the ship. Yes, that was the rest of this. Uh, hey Ernest, Tanika's like, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna let us. Oh, uh, is that Riblet? Yeah, that's yeah, it's Riblet. <laughs> You can't Riblet's eyes are uh, yeah, you Riblet got some 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 eyes that are unforgettable. Oh god. Hey Tanika. Um okay, wait, I'm gonna stay focused for two more seconds. I mean Wait, hold on, shit. John Carroll is in the house. What's up, John? I just said that. You didn't oh, even I missed John it. in the chat. I, I I was probably looking at Riblet. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're very distracting. That's a John is a deep cut. What's up, man? <laughs> He's the one that said leprechaun flute from great grandpa. Yo, I'm saying, yeah. right? Like, oh my God. it's so good. <laughs> I just sometimes with oh. my brother, we just pull it up. You know, so <laughs> we should have. We are. We out of March. We we missed it, Antoine. We should have been showing this around <laughs> like St. Patrick's yeah. Day. 
who got. I just think I think for me in my head, I just assume that it's been worn out because my friends send it every year, so I see it every single year. Um, no. it, the drawing, uh, look, I want a see, T-shirt with the drawing on it, like. Mind you, ma- mind you, Antoine, my friends, right? Tanika's like, is this real? So I don't think she's ever seen it. Okay, so oh. like my friends. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The, and it's again, you find I find something new with it every year because the the news reporter he's like they say a leprechaun has been spotted. Yeah. That's the <laughs> part. Where it's like he noticed. He's like he's like a bunch of niggas about to make us laugh our white asses off. Oh my god. Um. So yeah, that was hilarious, and yes, I could not breathe. Um, Y'all needed that laugh. I'm oh, happy to help. So there are times when you know I get I get sent some ignorant shit, and there are certain people that I'm comfortable sharing that ignorant shit with, and there are people that I'm like eh, I don't know. <laughs> so that's why I know like not everyone has seen it. Hey, Karen, it's a classic. It is a classic. All right, so him <clears> him <throat> going back to the bridge collapse, so we can move on from this section. There are, just in case people are not aware, there are still 22 crew members uh, uh, who are Indian um, who are still stranded on the ship. And so, yes, they do have enough supplies, food, uh, water, fuel, because they were supposed to be on the ship for about almost a month anyway. But um, yeah. they have to wait until there's enough debris, debris <coughs> here to free the vessel. And so they could remain on board for weeks. But I'm also like, if they got some hot spots to them, which was in the article and something else, I'm like, so y'all can't send like a smaller boat to get these motherfuckers off the big boat? Can you fly them out to traumatize? Can you get them somewhere? Like, I had a lot of thoughts. But I'm also not sure if they cannot leave it because they somebody has to stay with the ship. So I'm not sure like if everybody could leave. That wasn't clear to me. So Sarah, if you have some more insight. Yeah, I have some thoughts. A, yeah. (laughs) There was a, there was something in the article that would suggest that's part of it because they, even with all of it, toward the end it said like they're gonna see if they can get some crews out to replace them. And I'm like, what do you mean see? They need to be off that boat. So they clearly right. do have to have somebody go on the boat because it's not like they're just gonna rescue them and leave it. Like they're gonna like take them off and exchange them. Now about the hot spots. Um, that's tough because if you think about it, <laughs> hot spots could be literally on a um what what do we call those things again? Um I'm 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 tired. Um Towers? Do, you know the fly um no no the, the drones? Flying things. Um drones, thank you. Yeah, yep. They could put a they could like drone some stuff like that over, right? I mean it's not necessarily Oh, that's true. Mean, that's true. It, you know, because that's just a hot spot. I mean, I need to know they're doing big stuff, but I mean they could definitely have helicopters. Do that. I don't know. It does seem that's like I mean, like, cut the fuck on. Too they many can send movies. a rowboat. Like that's cut it saying. out. Maybe we watch they said, well, the water they can't. Helicopter. They the can't navigate the water because of the metal. So I did get that part, but I thought they would have helicoptered those people out. That's what I'm saying. Me. A helicopter with a little rope ladder. I mean, maybe we yeah. watch too much, too much Mission Impossible, but it, it seems like. I think that's what it is. I it think I've seen like too many movies. Rope, I'm just like. A little rope ladder helicopter. Also, did you all see that tweet recently that said um, Mission Impossible 6? I'm starting to think maybe the mission is possible. Did you guys see that? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one Mission Impossible movie. I'm not. Really? <laughs> the tweet is, oh. is, is funny. Wow. Um, yeah. you know what? Yeah, I maybe I watch too know. much NC. I might watch too too much NCIS, NCIS, which is about the Navy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, y'all can't really get <laughs> to the boat. Like, we're, you know, whatever. I don't know. So, okay, moving on. Yeah, it is a little um, hard to like understand how it's like things are. I don't know. It's like how they're, they're and they're saying that they're all reporting. We're good. We're great. It's like they're trying to stay upbeat. I don't think they really want to stay. Unless they like are in a bad marriage or something, I don't think they want to stay stranded on like a ship and like a shipwreck in the middle of like a rip ocean, whatever. What what is it a lake? What nobody wants to stay there. Like nobody wants nobody. to. Whatever it is, they don't want to hang out there for like you know. Body it's of water. Me like the, a body of water. It's reminding me like the Chilean um, miners and stuff. Like nobody <laughs> wants to like stay there longer. Then they have to, you but know. Honestly, honestly, Sarah, they probably safer on the fucking boat with the current climate when it comes to people who were not born here. I would stay my black ass. They Indian too. They brown people. I would stay my yeah, ass on the boat. Yeah, a bunch of Indian people. 
which yeah. scared me. I'm not me saying, at here, look, Antoine, uh, born here in Texas, you still might get rounded up because they might be like, we, you know, unless you got your birth certificate on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> we might and they're trying to make it legal. Oh, just, I had yeah. thought. You just kind of look suspicious and you brown yeah. and, you know, I just These thought we yeah. would make sure. These are like the things you never um, think about. Like, like they're not going to just leave everything sitting in the water. Like they're going to, they have salvage yeah. crews. They're like breaking apart the bridge. And if you think about it, that shit is expensive. That, that seal, all those, the things that they use to make bridges. So it's like, of course they're going to see what they can salvage off the thing to rebuild the bridge. They're going to be melting that shit down and trying to use it for parts to rebuild. So they're going to, See whatever they can pull off the bottom of that ocean floor, whatever body of water floor. Well, yeah, I know they did say they need to clear de the debris so that they can try and figure out how to then start rebuilding. It's about to be a process. Um, sorry, not that I want to stand on a leprechaun video, but Danielle said she's never seen it. I could have sworn you sent it to Danielle. I did, but I, but, but just like just it. like so me, because with I I do try to go back and watch everything that uh because. You and Danielle send really good material. Y'all tend to send stuff more. I don't, I've rarely sent anything. So when I see, when it's something like that, that I'm so indoctrinated into, I send it, but y'all probably just, y'all probably were busy or whatever. Y'all probably just missed that one. Um, sorry. We're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to, sorry, not stay there. Uh, uh, I did see the uh, comment about Larry Hogan and I have been catching the news stories about him. He is running for the Senate um, and he used to be governor and uh, he's a terrible human being. So yeah, he overrode <laughs> warning, safety concerns, and cost to bring container ships. Also did some other shit. He, re he redirected funds uh, that would have gone to Baltimore Harbor and like certain things that would have been helpful here and like redirected them to more state other shit. Basically stuff that was gonna benefit white people. So um, yeah, I need all that yeah. to be in a campaign, couple campaign ads so that he does yeah. not have that sentence. Who was yeah. the football player who his daughter went to a college. I bet Tony is the first one that gets this one. His daughter went to a college and then there was money that was supposed to be allotted for minorities for something, but then they moved the money to build Wasn't like it a, Brett Favre? It was Wasn't Brett it Favre. Favre. Yeah, it was Brett Favre. Yeah. yeah. It's giving Damn, Crescent got it. That's <laughs> you lost your own bet against yourself. I know she Don't bet against Crescent. Yeah. I know a few uh, things. <laughs> well, also what Karen said. What Karen said. If they're still getting paid, I'm sure they don't mind. I mean, that's a good point because maybe they're getting paid like double, triple overtime to sit in the water in the middle of nowhere, well, and they're like, again, I'm good. <laughs> keep in keep in mind they were supposed to be on that ship for almost a month anyway, so they have everything that they're supposed to have. They just weren't supposed to be in one place on the ship. The ship was supposed to be, you know, and then they still off. need to maybe do that, or I don't know. They they're gonna get paid one way or the other. <laughs> well, I guess for me, the concern for me was you're on a problematic boat. It lost power, and you're yeah. sitting there, and they're saying they have generators. So, you know, that's just, it just, I would want to get off the fucking boat while everybody figures yeah, no, everything I, out. I would want to get off. Yeah. I yeah. Agree on that. But they sound yeah, like they okay. And like, the I, like I said, they're not in their native land. So they might feel like, let me stay in here. It's a little, it's a little piece of home in here. I ain't got to worry about all these fucking Trump supporters when I get off the boat. Okay. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Well, we done been we we done been we done been through leprechauns, Candace <laughs> Dillard, Bassett. We've been all over the place. Well, Larry Hogan. We that before we got too far away from St. Patrick's Day, you know, we needed that <laughs> before fair. we went. That's you fair. know, we had to get that That's in fair. for 2024. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Uh, speaking of the election and <clears throat> Handmaid's Tale, Florida, Florida, Florida edition. Okay, sure, can't get that out of my mouth. Uh, so the decision that came down this week is the Florida Supreme Court ruled on, first they had to rule on a 15 week ban that was implemented in 2022, which was immediately challenged. And then last year, right before the dummy um, announced his presidential bid, he signed a six week abortion ban, literally in the middle of the night, like middle of the night, no motherfucking press, just, you know, we knew about it the next morning. So, and then, so of course that also got immediately challenged. So the court is just now hearing, de deciding both of those. One, the 15-week ban, and then the, the six-week ban. So here's the crazy part. So they're like, yeah, the 15-week ban can go through. And then, so also the six-week ban can go through. So the six-week ban goes into effect in 30 days. One, um, that's the bad news. So the encouraging news is this also might now make Florida a play for the Dems because the... Um, 
the right to, I actually love the name of this group. It's called, uh, oh shit, where'd that go? Floridians Protecting Freedom. Thank you very much. Um, and so they got a proposal that's going to be added to the ballot in November, which would enshrine reproductive rights in Florida's constitution. So it wasn't clear that the Florida Supreme Court was going to allow this to be on a ballot. Like I was like, I don't know, because I don't trust them because DeSantis appointed like five of them or four of them mm. or something. I think it was like four, five. So I was like, I don't know what's about to happen. So I think it was a four, three decision. Oh, okay. Um, right. So basically, so in November, if there will be an option to add a constitutional amendment to Florida's, uh, Florida's constitution that enshrines um, abortion rights. So it's, it's basically would return it to Roe, but for the state. Uh, it would bar restrictions on abortion before fetal viability, which is considered to be the 24th week, 23rd, 24th, which is Roe. And that means it would invalidate the six week ban. It would also include exceptions past that point for patient's health as determined by the motherfucking doctor as it should be. Right. So, again, this is basically a return to Roe. And it was just we have something similar here, don't and, we, in California? I believe I, I feel so. like Gavin initiated something to make it permanent like your rights are permanently protected so if somebody comes after the fact it's like no it's built but, in but that's the thing about a national abortion ban which yeah become federal law right which that's is superseded, true. which is why this is a, still a huge fucking issue yeah um, so and, and and it's killing me because the states that are implementing these constitutional amendments in their state constitutions are basically restoring roe it, yeah, uh, this whole conversation drives me absolutely insane. Um, and then one thing, I mean, not that this is a new thought, but it's just listening to some of these arguments this past within the past week or so. I'm like, these are your religious views about conception, right? Like about when life starts. This is your religious view about it. Why the fuck am I being subjected to that? That is a part that that's, is like killing me. That's the biggest problem is the lack of separation between church and state. If you believe life starts at conception, then you do not engage in any of this, what you think is fuckery. But to force it on somebody else, that's the part that's disgusting. Stop doing yeah. it. What I do right. is much... your religious belief. And I've told y'all before, <laughs> people. I know people that have misused abortion. They, they've been careless. It does not make me feel comfortable, but... I would never tell somebody they can't have one. People have to make their own mistakes. I mean, even even technically, you know, from a re religious perspective, if you want to walk like, you know, God or be Christ like that is the whole point of us being you, you go all the way back to the Garden of Eden and the apple us having free will. We're allowed to sin and not sin. Otherwise, what's the point of even being a human? So you got to let people not. make their own if mistakes. But if you don't believe in sin, if you don't believe in God, none of this, all of this is irrelevant for you. Right. Which is the whole point of this goddamn country. I get to believe what I want to believe. Yeah. So if I want to look, if I want to be a flat earther, even though that's dumb, you know, I get, to, right. I get to roll with that too. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah, God, that's so the... Um, so, okay. So about that. Rub. Um. So then... There was a question. Trump finally did another campaign event, although he can't really afford them. That's why he hasn't done that many. So, you know, ever since the State of the Union, Biden been crisscrossing across, especially the um, the states that are in play. He's been like, where I need to go next? What's up? Where, where I'm at? So why y'all talk about this man is old and he's slow. He is moving around this country. OK, thank you very much. Trump is mm -hmm. not because he got to keep his ass in court. Right. Figure out how he get this money. But he, he lives fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. Lives in court. He got to figure out how to pay these attorneys. But he finally made it out for another campaign uh, event. And so there was a question posed and it said, do you support the six week abortion ban in Florida? So the question is asked by a reporter, the audience, the Trumpers start booing because that's what they're supposed to do. And then Antoine, did you get the screenshot? Were you able to? Oh, uh, oh, it's okay. I no, it to I you, don't. But I don't. Okay. <laughs> so um, then Trump says, well, "I'll just read it." Trump says, "We'll make a statement next week about abortion," which is bullshit. That's what he would always say. Remember, where, where was the infrastructure bill? Where was the new health care bill? You ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna say shit. But whatever. So Biden posted. He retweeted um, Trump's statement from True Social. And he said, you already made your statement, Donald. And then, look, this is why I was on what did you show it, Antoine, is because... Let me see if I so can pull it's it the up. Truth, it's the true social post, and then... Yeah, because that... It, he, it Describing it just doesn't... It, it, right. It, yeah, let me, let me pull it's it a, up. It's a red circle around it. And so these were Trump's words. After 50 years of failure, with nobody coming even close, I 
was able to kill Roe v. Wade, much to the shock of everyone. And for the first yeah. time, the pro-life movement in a strong negotiating position over the radicals that were trying to kill babies, even into their ninth month and beyond, that's a lie. Without me, there would be no six weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks, or whatever is finally agreed to. So again, you've already addressed it, player. This was like last May. Is This statement is from that. Yeah, um, um, here it is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. There it is. Yeah, my, so, my bad. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. So, right. But this is the type of like, this is the type of response that I'm appreciating from the Biden campaign, right? Oh, it like, was shady. Yeah. It, it was notorious shade queen. And this is what I'm talking. This is what they need to do more of. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I fucked with it. I love the red highlight. You know what I mean? Like the. <laughs> That's the, the best part. Like, and then. The, the circle and then the, without me, there would be no six weeks underscore. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I need more of this. It's giving. Thank you. Okay. And then <laughs> since we are up in this a year screen, ago. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, since we're in that screen, um, and then just as a reminder about Trump and healthcare and COVID, uh, you have the video queued up. Wait, which one? The video. Yeah, you were just showing when we were coming in from Sarah. Not Sarah. The other Sarah. Uh -uh. The, How to medical. The other with each, the girl. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what They're is she talking right? about? Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, let me go. Uh, so we doing how to medical. How to medical. And okay. actually, before we hit play, I think it's been four years to the date of when he said this, because they were talking about it on Morning Joe this morning. Okay. okay. Either this morning or yesterday morning. We hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light. And I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that too. Sounds interesting. Right. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. When we hit the body. So wait, wait. It, it was one more. This one was hilarious. Oh, yes. And it's yes. short. Uh, it's 37 seconds. I, mean, I love her. I yeah, love her she is pure gold. Uh, here we go. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, I don't no want to get into. It. There's no, no I, verse I, that means I, a I lot just, to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. I mean, Old okay. Testament guy or New Testament? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible. The whole. Bible is an incredible. I joke uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. <laughs> oh my God. So just somebody you know freestyling, don't literally. know what they're talking about. Nothing. Oh my goodness. Also, that's why you know which one we should play on Friday? How to Cognitive, because that's also a great one. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, we'll do that one on Friday. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know where she, I know she is, I think she had gotten like a Netflix deal. Like, I know she got a deal from all of those, but I don't know where she's been. Can the we, funniest, she needs to come back for this The election. funniest thing for me is when she said ultraviolet light and then she points at the lamp. That, or no, when she points at her butt is like the yeah. part when she says another place you can get it. The other places. <laughs> so again, the videos that need to be on a loop for this election. Like, just please, oh, folks, remember, God. this is the man who was, in charge like we don't want that we do not want that back please stop don't do that they should have okay so there was this one time when when we went on this like trip when we were younger it was like a night it was like a living nightmare like this is must be what hell's like i mean i know we're all like in the country now but it was different listening to like white country music <laughs> in western virginia wherever the fuck we were and they had like loudspeakers so even if you tried to not play it in the car it was like they're playing they're playing it on speakers on the street. We need like like that, but with like you can grab them by the pussy. You know what I mean? Like we need like yeah, all need, like, of the it. Trumpisms on loudspeakers. Uh, you know what I mean? Like we gotta out propaganda them. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, just I, remind I, I, people I with that. these short-term memories about because people be forgetting stuff and it's like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Equal. Equal. <laughs> Equal. <laughs> Equal. I and for um, anybody to not realize that, I mean, that is somebody who didn't they didn't do their bullshit homework before they sat there and started expounding because both of those sound like they sound like someone who has lost touch with reality. Both you don't say. Yeah, both. <laughs> you don't and to say. think that you have the wherewithal, the gall, the intelligence, the fucking pedigree, the degree to tell somebody you're talking about putting stuff in people's bodies. Like you're so egotist egotistical that you think you're going to suggest to the doctors how to approach this problem. Like, it's so man, yeah. it's so out of control. Um, so moving on. So obviously Florida doing what Florida is doing. And, um, Sorry, I got distracted by Karen's comment. <laughs> <laughs> Karen says, GOP keeps asking, are you better off four years ago from four years ago? No, motherfuckers, no, we are not. No, I mean, no, four years ago was bad. We are better off. Sorry. Yeah, just, we are better off from four years ago. And then, yeah, Ernest said that man has never read a Bible verse in his life. No, because yeah. he's too busy reading Mein Kampf. He's too busy reading yeah. Hitler. That's that's why. Yes. So, um, okay, so Florida is Handmaid's Tale. Um, and meanwhile, in the free state of Michigan, uh, so the Michigan governor signed an act to decriminalize paid surrogacy contracts. So I didn't realize this, but Michigan apparently was like the last state to still oh. criminalize paid surrogacy contracts. So you could get up to a year in jail or like a 10K fine. And mind you, I was like, who is going to jail and who is getting fined? Like, is it the lady who was having the baby or is it the couple? It's a little confusing. But anyway, the bill has repealed that plan, oh, the wow. ban, sorry. So, right, everybody goes to jail. Everybody, even a baby, even a baby goes to jail. Everybody goes to jail. So um, it also lays out the legal framework for parents of children born through surrogacy and provides regulations on who can act as a surrogate. So they give us, it just kind of makes the process a little bit um, more structured. So for example, a Michigan family had a surrogate, there was a premature birth and things which then complicated the rights of the parents. So the babies were rushed out of the room to get stabilized. And then the attorney called the parents and were like, uh, so the judge has denied y'all emergency right request for rights. And so then they had to they had to adopt their children. And it was like a two year fight. Yeah, so, it's not because uh, remember something uh, even even that Sherry Shepard situation was weird. Yes. Sherry yeah, Shepard. Yeah. Sherry Shepard was married and she was having an issue conceiving. So they took the husband's sperm and then they got either the another woman's around? egg or the or the or the surrogate donated the egg and carried it and then they broke up so yeah in the end sherry is not genetically related to that child but her husband was able to get child support from her and now it's his child genetically and sherry is paying child support it, it's it's weird. Yeah, they really have to make sure everything is ironclad. So I'm I'm glad things are moving in that direction. Yeah. And so also, I just you go ahead. I was just gonna say if this interests you, I accidentally stumbled upon what is basically a telenovela on uh, Netflix called The Surrogacy. It's dubbed. And it's like really right on topic because this is the kind of complicated stuff they cover in that show, I'll tell you. What uh, you say it's dubbed? It's from it's it's like a foreign. It's got to be from like Mexico, and it's um, uh. it's dubbed in English. But yeah, it was very juicy. Uh. I was like, "What is this? A telenovela? I stumbled into on accident?" Well, like, I mean, it's interesting because there <laughs> there have been cases in the past where the surrogate decided at the end, "I have a connection to this child, and I can't give it up," and the parents are like. It's our child genetically. You're the carrier. You're the surrogate. And to think that somebody could do that to you is terrifying. Depending you know? on the laws, yeah. They can yeah. be like, no. Like, it just depends on the state. If it's a state where they say whoever gave birth is the mother, then they're, like, screwed. Yep. And, Sorry, uh, I was trying to read yeah. up on this super quick, but it's too involved. So we just might re yeah. report back on the whole, just to give you the official facts about the Sherry Shepherd situation. Because... Um, 
you know, look, you know, the page six had a, had an article, but I'm like, I don't always trust what y'all are saying. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, <clears throat> I wish I would go through this whole drama of a surrogate and paying you that money and you trying to keep my child. <laughs> y'all, y'all, yeah. look, I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Yeah. Everybody needs to get some bail money together. <laughs> um, it, it ain't going down like that but yes there would be a contract so and I, I you know what i can't even talk about it um because <laughs> i'm about to get mad just thinking about it yeah. yeah um okay so still on trump's craziness so trump's 2024 jim crow legislation in case you needed another reason to get your ass up and vote for biden not just not like get off the sofa and go vote so should trump return to power Steve Miller, the ghoul, um, their plan is to dramatically change the government's interpretation of civil rights era laws to focus on anti-white racism uh. rather than discrimination against people of color. So they would push to eliminate or upend programs in government and corporate America that are designed to counter racism that has favored whites. So Trump, Trump spokesperson says, as President Trump has said, all staff, offices, and initiatives connected to Joe Biden's un-american policies will be immediately terminated so recent lawsuits from and the new the name of their group is called america first legal <laughs> which they said wait which is i love because you know sarah when i saw that i immediately thought of the aclu which turns out they are calling their long awaited answer to the ACL, aclu which for those american civil liberties union which just to pause there for a second for nearly 100 years has been our nation's guardian of liberty working in courts, legislatures, and communities to defend and preserve the individual rights, I know, and liberties that the Constitution and the laws of the United States guarantee everyone in this country. So just, you know, the purpose of the organization is to just fight for those, <laughs> get you get you the freedoms you're supposed to have according to this Constitution. So um, Steve Miller's group are like, yeah, fuck that. We need to just ride for the white people. So in 2021, his group successfully sued to block the implementation of a $29 billion dollar pandemic era program for women and minority owned restaurants saying it would have discriminated against white owned businesses. Again, for you black folks checking for these people, keep that in mind. In February of this year, they signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to sue CBS and Paramount. And I remember seeing this and I was like, this is insane. Alleging discrimination against a straight white man who wrote for the show SEAL Team in 2017. Also in February, they, they issued a civil rights complaint against the NFL regarding the Rooney rule, which allows what says you have to have at least two minority candidates must be interviewed for a vacant top position. Again, must be interviewed, not must be hired. OK, right. just interviewed. That's it. But they're like, we don't like that shit either. Um, also, in 2021, a federal judge blocked a four billion dollar program to help black farmers. And then earlier this month, another federal judge ruled that the Com Commerce Department's Minority Business Development Agency was discriminated against white people and that the program had to be open to everyone. I think so what's... if I hear, sorry, just if I hear any black person talking about Trump did this and that for me, shut the entire fuck up. Go ahead, Antoine, you're about to say. It's just the, because it's <laughs> not really irony, but these <laughs> things were put into play. Everything you mentioned... All of those, it wasn't like somebody woke up one day and said, yeah, you know, I just think I just feel like we need to do a little something extra. In order to implement policy on that level, you have to find smoking guns where corporations and businesses are actively discriminating against pe people of color. And these policies were, were put into effect to offset that. And it's as if these people are behaving like, oh, that's not an issue anymore. So you don't need to have that policy enforced. And it's just not true. And this idea that it's a sad world when all the advantages that the average white American has. I mean, we've talked about it on the show. Literally, if a nigga live in a house for 10 years and you compare it to the same house that a white person lived in, the nigga's house will appraise for 30 percent less. Like that is baked into the system. We have proof that yep. this happens. So you have these policies to offset that, and now you're crying and saying, well, it's unfair. It's never been fair for us. So no. it's just crying about things not being fair when you still have an advantage, even though these policies are in place. It's like you just, and y'all know, it, I, obviously this don't apply to everybody, but the biggest issue 
with white people in terms of in reference to policies like this and just everything across the board is that from a political perspective they or, or even financial they just don't want to share shit with anybody even with you no. know building america we not gonna do it we go bring niggas from the center of the world over here and do it it's like everything it's like can you just share the wealth and be an american with all no. of us that's no. all everybody wants no. no and also that black man got that black man became president they yes. officially lost their entire mind yeah so yeah, this shit um, didn't just fall yeah. out of the sky. We're not just out here raising our hand and saying it's hard. It's harder for us. It is literally documented that these things occur. And I, I'll tell you something. Look, this ain't. This is just my observation. If I'm not mistaken, USC had a situation where the school was being sued by a bunch of Asian students that said that they were being discriminated against because of policies that they had put forward to try and help you know niggas get in there now i don't know statistically i'm just giving you some uh what, what, this is anecdotal this is this is anecdotal uh information uh as an uber driver and, it, and there's nothing wrong with asian people being at usc like usc when i go and dr when i'm at usc now it looks like it's an a it looks like it's a school that's in asia <laughs> So what I'm so what I'm saying what I'm saying is that uh, you know there is something to be said for a school that wants to put out a message of diversity where everyone is welcome as opposed to one particular demographic because I guess what I'm trying to say here is USC was never overrun with niggas there were never enough. <laughs> So it goes to show the program was not Third causing. Of my class. <laughs> yeah, the program was not causing a a sea change in the demographic of the student body. It still had no. a minority of black students. But now that this lawsuit, whatever that lawsuit went, that whatever happened with that lawsuit, it's just going to show like it's they're taking it out of context and it's kind of uh, out of control. So yeah, that's. I anyway. feel like um, I feel like the whole country will like visually be better if um steven miller doesn't end up back regularly in the media um nobody wants yeah, to see yeah, yeah. you and your spray painted hair ain't nobody want to <laughs> see that shit you know what i mean ain't He's nobody want to see that shit disgusting. also hard to keep a train of thought though because i'm like when does crescent ever wear her leprechaun shirt though anyway it was foretold <laughs> the night was foretold it was <laughs> yes, yes. Of all the nights, it was foretold. The Leprechaun video was, in fact, meant to happen. But no, that okay, I want to tell you the most messed up thing about this whole thing is how, like, messed up they had me, like, grammatically. Because you guys have to remember when I was in college, I took that class called White Racism. And it was not about, it was not, let's be really clear. It was not about people being racist to whites. It was about how like racist white people are basically. And like all the, it was like white supremacy. Like, you know, it was like, this is y'all, you know? So for them to, to brand it anti-white racism via that lens, it's, we like it. It's anti-white racism. Yay! But that's not what they mean. They mean, like, anti-being racist against whites, which doesn't, like, exist. And um, it's, so it's, it's really crazy because all the time, like, they can't even come up with their own shit. Like, they always have to steal everything. They always, they can't, they're yeah. so unoriginal. They can't even come up with their own shit. Like, every time we have anything, they try to rebrand it for racism purposes. It's like ridiculous, you know? So for me, this just feels like another example of that. Cause like, that's not even what white racism is, you know? No. Shout out to my old professor. No. That's actually not what white racism is. Um, and I <laughs> wish that I could agree with what your platform actually seems to be standing for, but it's the opposite. Um, and I don't well, want to see I'm going to keep this real simple for people. Again, look, 
Antoine, I know you had some hotel conversations. <laughs> <laughs> there will be many more, I'm sure. Right. So again, straightforward. Jim Crow will be coming back if y'all mess around and let Orange Hitler back in the White House. Okay. And we yeah. have examples. They shot down money that should have been going to black farmers. They shot down money that should have been going to uh, minority owned businesses. Hello. So that happened. There's proof of that. So please, yeah. please stop with this. You know, I like what he says. He did. He ain't do shit for you. He ain't no. gonna do shit for you. Your shit gonna be more fucked up. Okay, be clear. It go. It goes for Jim so Trump. many industries. Even um, because because the, the, it's so many. It's so many levels to this shit. Like even what I was alluding to with you know the Asian student thing. Part of the reason that white people uh, as a whole and institutions don't have a problem with their schools being overrun with Asians is because they don't view them in a threatening way like they do other minorities. So their proximity to whiteness culturally is a lot closer than ours will ever be because they don't have that historical element of, you know, you know, they, they, there, there, there was some issues, but not on the level of, you know, stealing millions of niggas from the center of the world and forcing them to build a new country. Exactly. So, yeah. So it, so that is, it's it's um that that element cannot be ignored. So yeah, it's uh oh. and and the thing is too like when you take the thing with the farmers. Again, these things don't just materialize out of thin air. If they were giving money to black farmers, it's because there was an institutional form of discrimination happening. It ha it's even happening right now with uh with weed growers. The number of minorities that are growing weed, it's because they're iced out. In order for you to get a foothold in there and get a business going, it's, look, uh, uh, if, if you've been incarcerated before, it's an issue. We're more likely to... You could have been incarcerated for for, for weed. For weed, for selling for, weed. For selling weed. And they'll tell you you can't participate in weed growing. And it's like, dude, I was selling what y'all selling legally. So... Yeah, it's just all rooted in non-inclusiveness. We uh, we want to keep everything hoarded for ourselves. And the problem is that it's plenty to go around for everybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's about it's power. Like it's the hoarding, but it's also about power. Again, yeah. the rounding of America is coming. Mess around and let that black man with the crazy name in the White House. No, no, no. We have to maintain power and keep you niggas. Yeah. yeah, under our the thoughts, jets. like under our actually under yeah. our heels. Period. Like that yeah. is the whole it's point. Under, under our elbows, under our knees, like under you know, like it's mm -hmm. it's just, it's crazy because they literally like had us build the whole country. They put these measures in place as like a little like oh here's like a little bit of crumbs to try to like help you catch up after we did this to you for all for yeah. all this time. And it hasn't even really gotten people to where it should should have gotten us because people have fought it the whole way through. So it hasn't even really gotten us anywhere. But the, they see just a little bit of progress, like the few people who could make it. And they're like, wait a minute, let's bring back slavery instead. And they want to just well, kind of stop everything in their tracks and act as if like, as act as if like none of that stuff happened and that it's just about, well, now white people can't, Get stuff like the whole Rooney, the Rooney rule thing with the, with, you know, oh, so they have to interview two minority candidates as if that means anything. You could interview 500 white people and two minority candidates and they're like going crazy about this rule. That really is like, yeah. is it really that big of a deal that they just want? They're not requiring them to hire that. They're just requiring them to interview two minority candidates for the position not compare not in a, not in an a ratio form not in any kind of like if you do five white people this it's like you could literally do 500 white people and two black people and you're acting like that's ruining life for white people and that it's taking away opportunities for white people because two minorities not even black but two minorities were given yeah. an opportunity yeah. Make America great again is take this country back for white people. You, yeah. you Negroes, you black and brown people have gotten too far ahead and you, and we haven't, but you know, in their eyes we have. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. gotta take all this shit back. Keep control. Yeah, keep off of the plantation. And as John Carroll noted, the, he's right. We do have more, we have elements of Jim Crow. Honestly, it never fully left, but there was some progress made. 
Well, yeah, yeah, that's been trying to get rolled back, right? With voter suppression and um, redistricting, not just in the South, but even when the Supreme Court was like, hey, y'all maps looking crazy with this gerrymandering, states were like, yeah, I don't care what you said, Supreme Court. We still gonna keep our fucked up ass looking maps. Yeah, like they're crazy. just ignoring the Supreme Court when they don't want to like fuck with it, which is I'm like, can we do that with this whole abortion bullshit? Okay. And gerrymandering um, so is just a prime, like when, when I learned what gerrymandering was in school, I'm like, y'all just weak. Yo, not y'all don't want us to be great. Can we just be straight? Can we just be straight and be able to feed ourselves? You drawing these fucking it look 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 these districts literally look like that leprechaun drawing. It don't make no fucking sense. It only makes sense for your it only makes sense for you know you 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 had this district that's all black with a little small white area and then they redraw y'all. I mean y'all know what gerrymandering is. Like it's so blatantly racist. No, Anton, yes, you know what it looks like? Not a leprechaun, a salamander. Because if you go to <laughs> right. media and you look up the word origin for gerrymander, I did this when I was studying for the bar exam. If you go on Wikipedia, it's a really good Wikipedia page, and you look up the word origins or just look up the word gerrymander, it comes from some politician in Massachusetts whose name was Jerry. And mm -hmm. he drew the redistricting line so effed up it looked yeah, like a salamander. It looked like a salamander. So yeah. they took his name Jerry and they took the word salamander and they created the word gerrymander. And if yep. you look it up there on you Wikipedia, go. you can even see the little picture of the gerrymandered map he created that looks like a salamander. It's very yep. I love a good word origin Terrible. story. But fuck Terrible. The salamander um, people. Oh, Tony pointed out I'm too just, with the lawsuit I was talking about with um uh, and it, and I get the schools mixed up. I noticed at USC, but then when somebody in the chat mentioned UCLA, I'm like the same. I I see a lot of the element at UCLA as well. But the lawsuit, I, I think Tony is right. I think they used Asian students as the figurehead, but it wasn't actually them filing the lawsuit. So well, it was. They definitely did for the Harvard suit. That was absolutely the the. Well, the Harvard one is separate from what I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about was specific to either USC or UCLA. I think it might it might have been USC, but e either way, I'm just I was just speaking of what I had saw. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happened you know, was <laughs> well, two things. Two things. One, um, if we actually had a full democracy, like if we just had a straight up, you get to vote. First of all, if everyone who's eligible, like let's say a certain age gets to vote fuck the felon i was a former felon whatever that, like you just get to vote republicans would never win another election for as long as they exist right like mm. because their policies are trash which is why they have yeah. to do the gerrymandering which is why they have to do the voter suppression which is they have all these Everything. damn voter id laws oh, because they know sure. like their policies are fucking trash and so that's the, another part of the problem if you will i don't know if you will that is part of the problem and then the other thing i was gonna say is speaking of schools so uh Bilal and um Tony are in the chat having this whole thing about Notre Dame versus IUSB. Uh, I'm from South Bend, so both schools <laughs> work for me. <laughs> I know it's Notre Dame, but it's not a leprechaun. I just happened to have on my Notre Dame gear tonight because I, I, my, my mama's house is super close to campus and uh, it's cold outside and I didn't feel like changing my clothes. <laughs> it's about it's the tonight. leprechaun video. It was meant to happen. It's so, just, just yeah, well, both, schools, it. both, schools are, both schools are great. <laughs> my mom went to IUSB. My dad was in her day. See, I'm a product of. Oh, wow. school, so yay. Could have been a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, we are moving on to the last story because we are wrapping this up because that bitch is tired. Um, all right. So we even with all this nonsense about Orange Hitler and whatever. Black excellence. Okay. It's an amazing story. This a little black boy genius from Louisiana. Yeah. He's becoming a Mensa member. So as a baby, he experienced uh, hearing and speech issues. Um, his mom said he wasn't really talking. Even like it was mama, dada. He was, she was like, and even that was iffy. You know, she was like, I don't even think <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. That part was, was like, so funny. Even that was iffy. <laughs> right. She was like, I don't even think he was saying 10 words. Um, and so she was really trying to get to the bottom of it, which thank God, you know, that she kept pressing on trying to figure out what was on what was going on so she said she had him tested for autism like several times and they were like he is not mm -hmm. autistic and so she's like what the fuck is going on so they had his ananoids tested and that's the tissue that sits at the back of the nasal passage to trap harmful bacteria when that we breathe and swallow i was like oh how about that so they removed and the and wait removed 
and tubes were placed into his ears. So as a result, there was a muffled sound suddenly became clear. And with the help of speech therapy, he was speaking and reading by age two. Well, now he is a first grader and he is thriving. Um, reading is a 99.9 percentile, math and a 95th percentile, overall cognitive skills, 99.7 percentile. He's been accepted into Mensa. Uh, it's a, for those who don't know, members only society for people with the highest IQs in the world. Trump ain't never anywhere near that. Um, and this baby said he wants to go to Harvard by by 13 and he's going to play in the NFL and his side hustle going to be he's an astronaut or an engineer. I'm, I, I love this little boy. <laughs> Little boy so I'm much. like, slow down um, a little bit. <laughs> like, that, was the, no, no, no. that was the best part. So, that was the side hustle. Like, yeah. Yes, right. Astronaut I, and engineer was a side hustle. Well, I don't want to be hustle. like, uh, what's our, I don't want to be like Killer Mike. I don't want to shit on his dream. So let me stop. Um, Thank you, Antoine. Yeah. Look, you talk about slow down. He had a slow start already. He's like, no, no, no. I'm making up for lost time. Okay. The first two yeah. years, whatever. And, and but look, like, he like, might, it, it might be with all the different. Third party, the private sector, shit. He might be able. He might be able to be an astronaut in the summer, and then go back and do whatever he wants the rest of the year. So who knows? No, nah, I mean, I yeah, mean, I this is the thing it, about main, about. Is, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I was saying, my main thing is we got to fight for our children, right? Like, do not take I don't know what's exactly. going on for an answer. Like, we exactly have to stay saying. fighting for our kids. Um, so I'm so happy that this particular mother was like, no, no, no. We about to figure we're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm yeah. Like, what's going on? Because yeah. it's harder for right. us. They don't. They don't. Uh, it's, it's just like, you know, when particularly black women are in pain, they're less likely to get prescribed medication because they think your pain threshold is higher than that of your white contemporaries because we're we're extra strong stock, you know, from being bred from, you know, just. You know, that whole thing. And uh, yeah. that falls in line with this having to, you know, constantly go and get a second opinion because you're not taken seriously. It's like it's like, why would we you know, I can imagine and I don't know that this happened, but I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, someone were to tell her, well, I, he's just developmentally challenged. And imagine that someone told her that and she went with that narrative and she actually gave birth to a genius. So, yeah, we we do. We have to be diligent. Yeah. That's the thing, too. Everything you. Oh, yeah. It wasn't the same with our kids. It's everything well said. Sorry, I think there's a delay. (laughs) It is. There is a delay. (laughs) Um, I was going to say with our children and my mother, you know, kind of did some research on this is you know, sometimes our kids are very, very, very smart and they're in class and honestly class is moving too slow for them. So they start acting out. And mm-hmm. it's not until later when you, you know, figure out like, oh, let me get my child tested. They're, they are, they're like, their IQs are like through the roof, but because they were not in the right environment for them, they they got off the, you know, they got off the path. So that, that, ha- that happens to our kids in particular. Definitely. Because, you know, Right. They're like, oh, he's a problem. She's a problem. We're putting them in. We're going to track them. We're putting them in like the slow class or like bad behavior. Like it's it becomes a whole thing. And so there's so much that we have to stay on top of, especially now with public school education going the way that it's going with this voucher bullshit and corporatization of it. And yeah, you just got You just got to stay on top of this shit. If you bring kids into this world (laughs) and uh, since Republicans are forcing your ass to do that. um, Yeah. Figure this out. Yeah. Um, Um, yeah. Ernest said many five year olds want to be dinosaurs. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like well, it's, this girl it's, wants to be uh, NFL player, astronaut, and engineer. Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. No, I, I was just going to say pretty much what, what y'all have said. I mean, it's like you have to like fight for your kids and you have to follow your own intuition. And, you know, I've, I've had a lot of, you heard a lot of stories known people where, you know, some kids, they have like a slow start, but then some of those kids are the ones that once they start, you wish they never did they're like the energizer bunny like once they start they never they never stop yeah you know and and i like i i've had friends they're like worried you know the kid starts to speak slowly and and you know you have to like you know check things out especially if you have the the privilege to be able to do that you know you have to like Mm -hmm. you know see if there's something they need if there's something that can help them if there is something but for some of the kids it's literally just like a matter of time and they're just they're just like cats and they're just stubborn they do stuff in their own time and when they're ready they start going and you're like damn you know and i mean i i think for me like i i worked in this office once and i was right near the copying machine and um 
it was a, it was a tough place to be in because people would always have their little copy air talk and you could hear that and you'd be trying to focus and you'd be getting distracted by like, Oh, what's this story about? So one day I was really trying hard to focus. Um, I was like, you're not, you're not listening to any of these people. You're not getting distracted by your coworkers. You're going to just, and then all of a sudden I heard, I heard, um, I heard fear, fucker, fear, fucker, every day, fear, fucker. And then that was it for concentration. I was like, I got to find out what that's about. Cause that's, that's a weird, that's weird. So I went and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to concentrate. What, what, is, what, what did I just hear? <laughs> so one of my coworkers had a good friend. She had a, a kid who, um, when they were born, they, they didn't speak. They didn't speak for like the first three years of life. Um, zero words and they're worried is the kid developmentally deleted are they deaf are they you know do they have speech problems whatever so one day um they're you know whatever people are over the kid all of a sudden says that um so she had a little impediment but the mother had been dressing her in seersucker every day <laughs> and the kid was <laughs> the kid was like literally over it like no so it's like it's like that's what forced this kid after three years of silence to speak was like i gotta say something because i don't want to wear seer sucker anymore so so fear fear fucker fear fucker every fa fear fucker was really seer sucker seer sucker every day seer sucker was the kid at the water cooler talking or was like the pair? No, like one of the someone guys was telling the story. Was telling yeah. the story. Yeah. Right I, the I, that part. I was like, <laughs> yeah, they were the telling the story and about like, the child. Son of a bitch, every time I try to concentrate on work, I hear fear fucker or whatever. And it's like, as if you can just like tune that out and be like, no, I don't even even need to know what that's about. I was like, Nah, what's no, 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 the, no. Um, fair, fair, fair. I would have gotten that from my desk, too. Yeah, what's Fatima the, uh, is asking Bilal what the fuck he is listening to right now. What is going on? What are the cho what choices are you making? They were both watching and come and arguing about what we were talking about. So I don't I don't know what's happening. But yeah, sorry. Fear fucker. Fear fucker. Fear fucker. <laughs> no, Sarah, I too would have had to get up out of my seat and been like, okay, I'm I'm sorry. What's yeah, the, what I was like, now me? I need to know what's happening because that's really weird. Um and then and now it's like a great story for me to tell if they're if one of my friends has a kid and they're a little slow with speech. I'm like, one day they gonna speak and they're gonna say some weird shit you didn't even know was coming. You know. <laughs> well, you the truth of the matter is, most done. most kids, most kids, the thing is standardized, and, and this goes for any child, regardless of color. But we're more likely to be relegated to, oh, you have a mental disability, when. The system is just not speaking to your sensibilities. Everybody isn't set. Every child, when you put children in a classroom and you try and teach them in a standard way, all of them don't respond to that in the same way. And it takes a really good teacher to recognize that a child has a special need that doesn't mean they're developmentally challenged. It just means that the status quo is not the best route to take when trying to indoctrinate them into an, a system of education. So, yeah, just, yeah. you know, they, yes. they 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 need to be more cognizant of that. And we'll yeah. have more geniuses. They're probably a oh, ton exactly. of clothes. A lot of those that's, are the geniuses. Yes. That, that that's sounds. what I'm saying. The kids who are sitting in class bored because it's you fucking moving too slow for them. And they're yeah. like, okay, I already know what the hell you're talking about. I'm off to the next or I'm about to just entertain myself. And now yeah. I'm the problem kid. Right. Turns out, you know, like they're actually brilliant and you just need to mm -hmm. better challenge them. So, um, yeah, we're, we're wrapping up because I want to go lay down. <laughs> um, so there I'm um, hopefully maybe we'll talk about this on Friday. Uh, there is a new animated series on Netflix. Uh, it's a remake, um, a reworking of Good Times. Um, it's getting commentary. <laughs> so if you haven't watched it yet, y'all should check out the trailer for that. So really quick, uh, for the first time, uh, for the first time ever, uh, I have a connection with someone important, and it is not through Crescent or Nefertari. Um, Hilarious. Uh, Renata Shepard, who is the executive producer and showrunner for the animated show that you're talking about, the animated yeah, no, no, no. I, I know, I know, I don't know her personally, but I know her through somebody else. Yeah, she and Valencia have worked together on another show. They, they know each other. So she dated a friend of mine. Okay, so Renata 
is from Glenwood, Illinois, where I'm from. She was one of my brother's best friends growing up. And, uh, yeah, she, uh, I'm trying to think. Somebody had a birthday party. It's just weird. It's just weird to see, because she's younger than me. So one of my brother's friends is out here doing big things. I know it is controversial, because I saw, um, I saw. And all, I'm, I, I know the head of animation at Netflix, so I'm not saying shit. <laughs> right. I love this yeah. woman. But the but I, I a lot of people. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say, Sarah? I'm like silence banner for me and Crescent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think it's, but also some of the people, not some, actually the cast, you know, some of them are speaking up and they're like, you haven't even seen it. You're basing your commentary off of a trailer. That's what I don't want to talk about too much because I don't know who all has seen right. the trailer. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you plan on tuning in on Friday, watch the trailer before that. So, well, a little, a little um, bit of trivia on good time. So, um, you know, oh, and I don't have my shirt on because I had, man, I had my uh, Golden Girls shirt on. So oh. if y'all remember, um, Norman Lear's shows were notorious for spinoffs. So you had All in the Family and the Jeffersons were a spinoff because uh, Lionel, the original Lionel, was friends with Meathead. And he brought his parents over and his parents are George and Wheezy Jefferson and George and Archie butted heads. But Good Times is also a spinoff, technically of All in the Family, because B. Arthur played Maude, who's Edith's cousin, who was brought onto the show, who bumped heads with Archie all the time. They gave her her spinoff and then her cleaning lady was Florida Evans. And so yeah. they gave Florida her own show. If you ever get a chance, Maude has an episode on abortion. Maude yeah, gets I've seen pregnant. that episode. Isn't that That's wild? One of the Isn't that wild? Yeah, it's one of the yeah. best pieces of television in history. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you get a chance. But uh, so this is one a lot of people don't know. When they swapped the Lionels, remember the original Lionel on yeah. the Jeffersons? Mm -hmm. got swapped out. That was after the first season. That actor's name is Mike Evans. Mike Evans left the Jeffersons to write for Good Times, which was a series he created. That's why their last name is Evans. He gave them his last name. And in fact, he wanted to play JJ on Good Times but they wouldn't let him play JJ because people had already established a relationship with him uh, as Lionel Jefferson. And so. also, but the younger boy is Mike Evans. That was the character's name. Yeah, but that's not who he's based on. He said JJ is loosely based on himself. Uh, so I guess as an Easter egg, since he couldn't play JJ, they named one of the I was characters. About to say, I mean, yeah, I'm like, clearly that's your name, though, bro. Yeah, um, yeah, but uh, yes, yeah, it's, 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 and it's from it's, it's based in Chicago. It's based in Chicago. Man. Yeah, I remember you mentioning um, though the Michael Evans part yeah. on another episode. Yeah, we we need to wrap up, Sarah. Yeah, you about to say something. Y'all just know how to make my head spin. Um, first of all, about <laughs> shirts, I did wear my um, their their their. Their shirt because it's like people like to get it get it messed up. So this is like trying to help people, you know. There, there, oh. there, they are, you know. I like but that also, A is their pot. I love that. That's just cute. Right? Yeah, that's but funny. That, that is funny. That comment from Danielle. Wow. I mean, I don't know if you already put that up, but that one that says, "I wonder if he was just born genius or if the condition made his brain go oh, into yeah, overdrive because he couldn't verbally communicate." That's deep, Danielle. Damn, yeah. girl. I don't know if there's any science behind that theory, but I'd kind of like to um, explore it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's interesting. I <laughs> Crescent is tapping out. Um, <laughs> I'm hitting the finish button. <laughs> I'm hitting the finish button. It's not so, finished, but, but Danielle, let's talk. I, yeah. The last thing I'm going to say about the tr because, and this is I, what Danielle said about not the other thing. Yes, that comment was dope, Sarah. Thank you for highlighting it. Um, but Danielle said, I really feel like the trailer is mis misrepresenting the show. Not sure why they went with this direction. Exactly. That's part of the issue with this um, Good Times uh, remake that's animated. Watch the trailer. We'll talk about it on Friday. Yeah. And All Archie right. Bunker was Thank on you for joining us, Sarah. Again. Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> Archie Bunker was on like like standardized testing when I was in high school. Just 
That was always weird. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to be clear, that was a question. And I was like, racism's alive and well. Like, what's going on? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> I was just on my stuff. Like, it was weird. But it was really great okay. to see you all. Thanks Thank you, Sarah, me. for joining us. Thanks again. Always a pleasure. And uh, a pleasure. There, there, toodles, there. You guys got this. toodles to you niggas. <laughs>